Assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. In the name of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon His final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and all those who follow him until the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, last week we started, we opened this book or we opened the stories of the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many times we learn about the stories of great companions and many times we learn about the stories of great men, companions, and so on, so on. And we sometimes don't hear a lot about our women companions, right? And they played a big role in, in the Islamic education and the tarbiyah, the nur nurturing and the developing. And they also played a role in supporting, in supporting the Prophet Sallallahu and in supporting the believers in the times of struggle, right? So it's important to, to learn about them. And what better to, uh, to learn about than the daughters of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That they witnessed, they lived uh, with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those years, those years uh, in trying to, in, you know, take in the revelation and the instructions, right? And also take in the persecution that her father, who was a Sadiq al-Amin, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he experienced, right? So when we look at the life and the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one thing that we take, we take in, in consideration is that it was a normal household. His children had struggles, had hardships, some related to the religion, but they also had challenges. Like we talked about last week about Zainab, Zainab bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when she married Abu al-As, and Abu al-As and Zainab, you know, when Abu al-As came from the journey of travel, Abu al-As discovers that Revelation came and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, Zainab, they all accepted Islam. And now Abu al-As is the husband and his wife became Muslim and he's not Muslim. And he didn't want to accept Islam. Right? So they did stay, they, they, they separated but they didn't divorce. They separated when the when, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made hijrah, right? Uh, Zainab chose to stay in in Mecca because she had hoped that possibly one day her husband will, who is a good man, will accept Islam. So therefore, that was her struggle, and there were many different incidents, and we're not going to go over it. If you want to see. Uh, re recap the story, if you weren't here, if you didn't hear it, I will suggest for you to go online on our Facebook page, Muslim Association of Lehi Valley, and for you to search in videos, and you will find the story of Zainab. And last week, inshallah ta'ala, like that, you can uh, look at the incidents that she experienced. Because today is the, the night for Ruqayya bint Muhammad, Radiallahu ta'ala anha wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So you, you should get busy with saying salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we're here. You know, ashar hasanat, easy, right? Ashar hasanat, every time you say it. So I don't, I don't mean get distracted just saying that and miss the whole lecture because when I ask a question, I don't want you to tell me just sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's it, that's what I got. I want you to, to answer some, some other questions, inshallah. So Ruqayya was known as the lady or the woman of the two hijra. The woman of hijratan, of two hijras. And before talking about her story, we talk about the beginning of when the Prophet ﷺ received the revelation, right? The Prophet ﷺ received the revelation 
and he experienced hardship, who was one of the ones that caused them hardship? Who was the one that his wife used to throw st uh, uh, thorns and stuff? Who was he? Abu Lahab, right? Abu Lahab. He was actually no, named, his name is not Abu Lahab. That's his nickname. What was his name? Ah, you got to... Yeah. You got to respect the people by, by knowing their name. Like, how many of you know Abu, uh, the name Abu Huraira? How many of you heard uh, the name Abu Huraira? Mashallah, everybody. Right? Now let me ask you, what was his real name? Ah. Abu Huraira means the father of the cat. Was he really a father of a cat? That's, that's not, you know, possible. It was Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. So what was his real name? And what was his name before his real name? Ah, right? I told you, I'm going to ask questions. Don't respond, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, only. You need to give me an answer, right? That, that's how it is. All right? So, okay, I'm going to tell you. Next week, if I ask, you should know. Right? Because I already told you the answer. Number one, his real name was Abdul Shams. The servant of the son. And then when he, when he accepted Islam, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا, لازم تغير اسمك. You have to change your name. You will be called Abdul Rahman. And that's why his name Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. Alright, so his original name was Abdul Shams. The slave or servant of the son. And the Prophet changed it. Abu Lahab, his real name was Abdul Uzzah. Right? And so Abu Lahab and his wife, Um Jamil, they engaged in a lot of different attacks and persecution upon the Prophet. ﷺ. Now, the Prophet ﷺ was asked by his uncle, Abu Talib, to give to give his daughters, because he had after Zainab, he had Ruqayya and then Um Kultum, um Kultum right after, not, not long after. And they were younger. But Zainab got married with Abu Al-As, Abu As, right? So now the older sister is not around. So now Ruqayya and Um Kultum, they're like buddies. They're always together. So when they were growing up and they were in the age of marriage, Abdul, uh, Abu Talib, Asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, for uh, Zainab, for uh, Ruqayya and Um Kultum to be allowed to marry uh, Utba and Utayba. Utba and Utayba. Utba and Utayba were the sons of Abu Lahab. Let Ruqayya and Um Kultum marry the daughters of Abdul Uzza, or, because that was his name, or Abu Lahab. And the Prophet ﷺ, out of respect for his uncle, he said, uh, you know, and also out of, there was the adab that you ask permission. Right? So he, he went and he asked the same thing when Abu Al-As came to ask him for Zainab's hand. He went to Zainab and he said, what do you think? What do you think about Abu Al-As? And Zainab displayed shyness and she basically agreed silently, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ went to Abu al-As and said, congratulations, right? So here is a different story because, why is a different story? Because Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of the girl, right? When you get married, you don't get married to someone just you love you actually join another family, right? So the family is essential too. So Khadija knew that Um Jamil was of temperament. She wasn't very good. And so therefore, Khadija didn't want his, her daughters to marry Utba and Utayba. But she also refrained from something. She refrained from opposing because she didn't want it to be said that she 
is breaking the ties between Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his uncle and his cousins. Utbah and Utaybah. You see that? Also, uh, perception is important and family ties. So Khadija, because she didn't want it to be perceived like that, she decided to refrain from opposing to that nikah. And it happened. And it wasn't as Zainab and Abu al-Az marriage, a loving marriage. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Abu al-Az was known as being caring, uh, being a merchant, being uh, very well, very respected, right? And Zainab was very uh, known, uh, very responsible at home as well. Here you have also the same upbringing for Ruqayya and for Umm Kulthum. But on the other hand, you have a family that has a, a tainted reputation. So Khadija didn't want this, but it was a negative atmosphere. It was a neg negative. So now, now, like we say, check this out. Something happens. Revelation comes. Right? The Prophet ﷺ is in Ghar Hira. The angel Jibreel comes to him and recites to him, Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq. Right? And we know the story of Revelation. Now, in relation to Ruqayya and Umm Kultum, what happened? And we're not, we're not going to get into the story of Umm Kultum. This is just together, but, but we're not going to get into specifically her story as of yet. But what happened was, is that Umm Jamil wanted to harm Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was accused of dishonoring their gods and dishonoring their family and dishonoring their ancestors, etc., etc. So Umm Jamil and Abu Lahab decided to plot against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by ordering their sons, Utbah and Utayba, to divorce, to divorce the daughters of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, as Umm Jamil says to Abu, Abu Lahab, you have saved Muhammad out of his distress. You saved his, his face, his honor, right? Because you allowed our sons to marry his daughters. Right, so now we have to respect him, honor him, etc. So then Abu Lahab said to his sons, he said, I'm going to denounce you. I'm going to denounce you, my sons, if you don't divorce the daughters of Muhammad. So the divorce took place, and during that same time, the Prophet ﷺ early in Revelation tells Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, the days of rest are over. The days of rest are over. Right? The days of rest are over. Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Ruqayya with another opportunity to marriage. And she was blessed with marrying Uthman ibn Affan, ibn Abul As. And Uthman was known in Mecca as a businessman, as a person who had shyness, who had haya. And shyness is not only like people say, uh, you know, the the characteristic of a good woman or a good. A girl is shyness, and the man has to be very rough and very... No, shyness for men also, right? Shyness, it's a good quality to have haya. Because the Prophet ﷺ also said, al haya min al-iman. Shyness is from faith, right? Because one time there was a, there was a companion that, had, that displayed shyness, and his brother was reprimanded him, don't be shy, don't be shy. And the Prophet said, Da'ahu, leave him alone. Shyness is of Iman. So shyness does not make a person weak. Remember that. If you're shy, if you're like, uh, 
So it's okay. It's, it's okay. That's a good characteristic. It doesn't mean that you have to force it, but it doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with being shy. Before Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in Mecca, there was, a, there was like a song or like a nasheed that was sung like by, in English. By Allah, they used to say, I love you as Quraysh love Uthman. Like the mothers used to say, like to, to a person, I love you like Quraysh loves Uthman. Like that was a, that was a phrase. When Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu married Ruqayya, the, the song changed. They said, the best two persons who met each other were Ruqayya and Uthman. So they had a, a, little, a little song. Now, with the persecution, with the hardship, comes the first hijrah. And the first hijrah, because you said that she is the, 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 the woman of two hijras. The first hijrah was to Abyssinia, Habasha. And in this hijrah, this hijrah, the reason why they went, it was the hijrah. And this is very important. Why is it important? Because sometimes when we talk about hijrah, we say, you have to make hijrah to the land of the Muslims, right? You have to go and get away from the land of the non-believers, and so on and so on. But that's not totally correct. What, what's correct is if you can practice your Islam in a land, according to what our scholars say, uh, according to the, our scholars, even in the American Muslim Jewish Association in Amja, uh, they have stated that in any land that you can practice Islam, that land becomes Darul Islam. Any land that you can worship. You know, we have, we enjoy so many, so many, so much freedoms at so many levels that in many even Muslim countries we don't have. Right? So that we have to be fair. Right? That we, we have to be grateful for the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we're not going to get into the, the story of the, of the hijrah, what happened. We know the story, the and Najashi and the, and the discussion and so on. But one point is, who was sent? Many of us know the story, but let me ask a question. Who was sent as a delegate, right? As a delegate, because we know the story. If, we, if I ask you the story, the Muslims went and they met Najashi and then he, and then one of the Muslims Right, uh, Jafar recited Surah Maryam or some ayah Surah Maryam and so on, so on. And we know the discussion. But who was the delegate? Who was the delegate that was sent from Quraysh? Amr ibn As. I'm going to charge you extra. I was going to say, you won't be a true Egyptian if you don't know, man. All right? Because <laughs> Amr ibn As was the one that brought Islam to Egypt. Right? The first masjid in Egypt is Masjid Amr ibn As, right? Am I, am I correct or wrong? Am I, if I'm wrong, please, please correct me, right? And Layla Saba Shireen there with, with Sheikh Muhammad Jibreel, mashallah, it's beautiful. It's like, it's so, so crowded, you know, alhamdulillah. You, people walk over each other just to, to, to pray tarawih. So yes, Amr ibn As. So Amr ibn As was sent by Quraysh because he was, he was a good spokesperson to go and, and, and tell them that some people ran away from Mecca. And he, and he said that they are, and the two, the two crimes that they committed is that they are um, rejecting their idols and that they are dishonoring their families. So Najashi said, I can't do nothing <laughs> because of that. So then Amr ibn As said, what about if they reject Jesus? And this and that. And that's how they got, because Najashi was a Christian king. And so Najashi responded back and, and so on. And, th and then we have the conversation where Jafar relates Surah Maryam. And Najashi said, what your prophet says and what Jesus says comes from the same source. 
and I would not give them up for the world. I would not give them up. You can stay here safe. That was what happened, right? So now, in, in that situation, after that peace, and they, they, had, they had to establish their own schools and learning and learning, uh, learning ayats of the Quran and practice in Islam because they're raising children. They are families and we are, we, we always think like that. As Muslims, we always try to come up with solution. How can I save my children? How can I educate them? So we, we create stuff, right? We, we establish uh, institutions, right? So subhanAllah, in that experience, there was a fitna that happened. Because whenever there is leadership, whenever there is leadership, there's always envy. There's always, there's always, there's always someone, right, uh, power hungry, who thinks that what's happening is not right, so the, the way to do it is just to try to take over. And sometimes it comes from the same family. All right? I'm not talking, please don't think that I'm bringing up any type of historical uh, occurrences. This is just from the story, from my heart. And this is, okay, this is general, not, not, not specific, uh, not implying anything at all. Uh, so just to make it clear, we have to be very crystal. I, I've been taught by my teacher to be very clear. To be transparent, right? And there's nothing, this is the best way to, to, to teach. So, and Najashi had a nephew who attempted to take over his leadership. His nephew. And they got into a war. And the Muslims were in a safe haven where there was like a body of water and they were on the other side. Right? And now they need to know what's the update of the war. You know when, you, when you're watching a match or a game or FIFA or something, right? And you know, you want to know what's the update and you, you want to find out what's... So now sometimes seeing it is better. So Zubair ibn Awam decided to find out. But there's a body of water. How can I know the information? So they filled two water bags. And Zubair bin Awam went in the water and crossed to go and see how is the battle, uh, what, how, what is the update on the battle. And then Najashi won the battle. And the Muslims returned and they, and they rejoiced. They were happy. They were happy that a Christian king won the battle because he was just, right? It doesn't matter that he was a Christian king. He was just. He was fair. He welcomed them. He granted them a safe haven. So therefore, the rights of the Muslim is to also honor and respect and, and acknowledge goodness when, when it exists. Then after this coup attempt, Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Umar ibn Khattab, they accepted Islam. So the muhajir in al-Habasha, those that migrated to Habasha, they thought that khalas, the attack's finished. That means that, that we can return to Mecca. Some opted, and, and both are correct. Both are correct. And this is the way the Prophet dealt with things, right? Sometimes he will give the option you can do that, or you can do that. Like for example, like, like praying Asr in, in, in this location, or praying Asr later on in Hudaybiyah, right? Like how, like they, they, there were options. That he, he didn't say that's wrong and this is right. He left it alone. So in this case, some of the companions that were in, in Habasha, they thought, khalas, the, the there is peace in Mecca. Hamza radiallahu ta'ala accepted Islam and Umar bin Khattab who used to, you know, hate Islam, etc., etc. So let's return. So a group chose to return. 
And a group chose to stay in Habasha until they received a clear instruction from Rasulullah So both are correct. The ones that chose to go were Uthman ibn Affan and his wife Ruqayya. And by the decree of Allah, they returned. And upon their return, upon their return, they reached their home. And the first thing is Ruqayya visits their father's house and hugs him and sees and, and sees his his sister Fatima and Umm Kulthum and their faces were gloomy. They were sad. And Ruqayya found out that her mother Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away. So you see how this home had challenges too. Because of Islam and because of a benefit, you, you think Ruqayya and Uthman wanted to leave Mecca? You think they wanted to leave Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? But they left because for safety reasons. Right? And now they return and now another test. They left and, and they had to go through a long road to go to... A, Abyssinia. There were no trains, there were no planes. They had to cross the water to go to Abyssinia. They had, some of them got sick to go to Abyssinia. So they went through hardship for this. And then they have to return and they go through hardship again, the hardship of, of travel. And upon their return, upon their return, now they get this news that Khadija radiallahu ta'ala, the mother of Ruqayya, passed away. So she was saddened. She was saddened, but at the same time it was bittersweet. She was saddened at the death of a, of a mother, but she was joyful of reuniting with her father. Now, later on, Uthman ibn Affan and Ruqayya, they heard about the hijrah to the Prophet Wasallam, And they migrated with the Prophet Wasallam two years, two years prior uh, to the migration, they had a son. They had only one son. Now comes another test. So Ruqayya and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, because there's two of them, right? Radiallahu anhuma, because there's two of them, two companions. So usually when there's two, you say radiallahu anhuma, even if it's boy or girl, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, sahib uh, al-lugha. I'm just, you know, right? if, you, if, you, if you know Arabic and I make a mistake, you know, I'm a student of knowledge until I go to the grave. So don't, don't, don't shy away from correcting me, inshallah. All right? Free of charge. All right, so... Uthman and Ruqayya radiallahu anhuma had a son. And his name was Abdullah. Abdullah like the grandfather. Like the father of the Prophet sallallahu Like the great grandfather, right? And Abdullah as a young boy, as a young baby, was pecked in the eye by a rooster. And got an infection and died. Abdullah, so here's another test. Here's another hardship. Here's another reality. Because sometimes we think that the righteous don't experience hardship. And actually is the opposite. Those that, te that are tested the most are the prophets and then the salihin come afterwards and they're the ones that are tested the most. So never, never, when you look at someone that's uh, righteous or is a scholar or make dua for them, many times we don't, but please make dua, no, I'm not saying me, make dua for them. The husband took care of her. So my dear brothers, this is part of Islam, that you take care of your wives. And, and your wives didn't, I, I wasn't paid to say that, right? There's no incentive. All right, I'm saying it because that's just Islam. 
That's the Islam, right? Is that we love each other for the sake of Allah, we're partners for the sake of Allah, and because we're married for the sake of Allah, Allah says, uh, Allah places between us mawadda wa rahmah, right? Doesn't it, don't we read that in every nikah? Right? Wa jala baynahum mawadda wa rahmah, inna fi dhalika la ayat li qawmiya tafakkaroon, right? So Allah, this is from the ayats of Allah. So therefore, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala who displayed that. When, now here comes another test. Alright? A test for the Prophet ﷺ, a test for Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ruqayya is sick. Ruqayya is sick. And the Prophet ﷺ gets the revelation to that it is permissible to fight back and defend themselves versus the aggression. So now they're going to Badr. And Uthman hears the Ilan, he hears the announcement that we're going to Badr. And Uthman is here like, I'm taking care of my wife, should I go, should I sacrifice, should I leave my wife and put my trust in Allah and just go? He wanted to do that. Because he wants to serve, you know, Atiullah, Atiul Rasul, right? I obey Allah, obey His Messenger. I sacrifice everything, like the, like the companions will say, like Abu Bakr will say, Fadaka Abi wa Ummi, right? For you I sacrifice, for you, O Messenger of Allah, I sacrifice my mother and my father. That's the love that they have for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So now Uthman wants to sacrifice as well. And he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, stay with your wife and take care of her. The first battle, the battle of Badr. The Prophet ﷺ said to Uthman, stay with your wife and take care of her. When the battle ended and the announcement was made, the announcement was made that the Muslims were victorious. When the announcement was made, Uthman was given a kiss to his wife that was passing away. When the Prophet ﷺ returned, joyful of the victory, here comes another test. He comes to, the, to experience what Ruqayya experienced with her mother when, he came, when she came from the Hijrah and her mother was dead. Now the Prophet ﷺ returns home from the battle of Badr and he, find, and he goes to see, to check on his sick daughter and he goes to find out that she passed away. So the Prophet ﷺ sees Fatima near, next to her, her sister's bed crying, crying because her sister died, They're, right? And the Prophet ﷺ raised her up, hugged her, and then ordered for Ruqayya to be washed, and, and then he prayed Janazah over her. And that is the life of Ruqayya in brief, right? Because we, we won't do justice to explain years in less than an hour, but we try to the best of our ability to get the lesson, the, one of the main lessons is that they had trials, but they made moves and they sacrificed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a sign that Allah loves that family is that Allah tested it. That Allah tested it. And a sign that they love Allah is that they accepted the test. What we don't find in the story is that they complain about Allah. What we don't find in the story, they say, Allah, why, did, why is this happening to me? Allah, why did I lose my only son? But they didn't complain to Allah. They accepted the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding that Allah is al-Hakim, and Allah is all-wise, and that Allah is al-Qadir ala kulli shay. Allah is the one able to do anything and everything. So inshallah ta'ala, next week, by the permission of Allah, we will discuss in brief the story of Umm Kulthum, inshallah ta'ala, and then we will discuss the story of Fatima 
and Ali, of course, you have to write radiallahu anhuma. May Allah accept, inshallah. May Allah bless you. Thank you for attending. And inshallah ta'ala, if you know of a friend or someone that didn't watch, that didn't attend, you can easily, again, go on Facebook and share the recording. And you know what? If they watch it, you get hasanat. Good business. You get hasanat. And, and if somebody acts on something beneficial, for the rest of their lives, you continue to get the hasanat and the good deeds for sharing. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever invites to that, that which is good will get the reward similar to the one that does it. Whoever just invites. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq and bless us with remembering the beautiful stories of the daughters of Rasulullah and the, the honorable companions of Rasulullah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with being under the shade of Allah on the day that there is no shade except Allah's shade. May Allah bless us with the shifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless us with the intercession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless us with knowledge that is beneficial. May Allah bless us with wealth that is, a, that is pure. And may Allah bless us with actions that are accepted by Him. Wa sallallahu mabarik ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Wa akhir dawana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Barakallahu feekum. As-salamu alaykum.